welcome to Be Your Own Best Coach with JJ, the podcast. I believe that the best coach you can ever have is that one person that is staring straight back at you every morning in the mirror, you. Join me in discovering some key strategies so that you can create an empowered life and inspire others to live theirs. Your journey to being your own best coach starts right now. Welcome back to Be Your Own Best Coach with JJ. Today we're going to be talking about being a forever learner. Now I remember one of my mentors, Joe Parne, once said to me, you are either green and growing or ripe and rotting. Uh, Now, I don't know about you guys, but I know what I would rather be, green and growing. And the thing is, I think all of us go on this journey, or most of us go on this journey of starting off in life as, you know, a young child, we're open to learn, and then somehow along the way, we close off our opportunities to learn. If we think about it, when we're kids, We have this childlike curiosity and all of us that have been around kids know that kids ask a lot of questions. It's like, why? But why do we have to do things like this? Why do we have to do this? Where does the moon come from? You know, asking all these questions and we might giggle as adults about some of the questions that kids ask. But sometimes even those questions can get us thinking, well, hold on a minute, I don't know the answer to this. Uh, Or if they challenge something that you believe. I remember being at the zoo with my son when he was really young. Now, he was probably about, I don't know, five or something like that. And we were watching this, we were at this seal enclosure. And there was a guy and he had his mic and he's talking about the seals and And he said, has anyone got any questions? And he looked up and he said, oh, you young man. And I saw him, he had his hand up, my my son. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, what's he going to say? And my son said, how many seals are there? And as an adult, I'm looking down and looking at the seals and I'm thinking, I know how many seals there are, like they're right in front of us. Um, And it was so such a learning experience for me in that one moment because the seal the guy that was doing the presentation said well that is a fantastic question because we have three seals here and then we have another enclosure where we have another three seals and it took me back just just that moment took me back and I thought hold on a minute I made an assumption from what I saw and here's this little kid asking hold on I need more information how many seals are there and so he's he's asking more information and which I'm thinking I already know the answer to this which I didn't because I'd closed off my mind I looked at the seals and thought okay that's how many seals there are whereas my son is asking a question that opens that right up so often as kids Kids are are, are sponges, they're wanting to learn, they question. And then we go to school and schools can be great places to learn. But at the same time, we have to conform in some way, we're controlled in some way. And you know that, you know, when you go to school, you start at a certain time, you have lunch at a certain time, you complete tasks at a certain time. And often... Schools tell you what to think instead of how to think. They give you information and you have to then remember that information and be able to regurgitate that information. And that can be from history. You know, we we are in school and we learn all of this stuff and we take it all in and we learn not to question because if, if most of us, I don't know about you guys, but most of us at school, if we question something that's given to us, so something, say it's history, And they say, this is what happened. And you say, well, what about if it didn't happen? And it's like, no, it did happen. It's proven. And so you can actually, in school, get in trouble for questioning what is taught. And so you can be reprimanded for that. And therefore, you learn not to ask those questions or challenge what is given to you. 
to do what you're told. And then what happens is that you form these beliefs of what you have been taught in school and around your, you know, your parents, the people that you love, your elders will teach you stuff and it goes in and that is your truth and you form your beliefs. And as an adult, you have all of these formed beliefs from school, from parents to, to anyone that, that may have come, you have come in contact with. Now that can be from history, you can get formed beliefs from the media, from your experiences that you've had in life, from feedback that you've been given. So you might go up and, and speak and think, oh, I did a really crappy job. And then suddenly someone says you weren't great at speaking and this is when you're you know younger. And then as an older adult, you're still remembering that experience and still saying to yourself that you're not a great speaker. And then we label ourselves as well as we've, we've formed beliefs around our adulthood. We might say we can't sing or we're not a great speaker and we label ourselves as such. And they're from experiences that usually have happened when we were really young and we're still holding on to those beliefs of, our, our, of what we think is true. And we can stop questioning. We can give up on our dreams because we think it's not possible. And we trust the experts. I put the experts in, you know, in little, what do you call them, little hyphens, because there's so many experts around in this world. And it's interesting because experts can have completely opposite opinions. But we, an expert gets on TV and we go, oh, well, they're an expert and they've got a degree or whatever it is. And so therefore, they must be telling us the right information, not necessarily so. And people with titles. And I, 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 I love this quote that I created and it is so true. We are all open-minded until someone says something that clashes with our strongest beliefs. So if there's a strong belief that we have and someone says the opposite to that, you feel it. It's like this hook. It's like, oh, that's not right. And so therefore, as soon as you're doing that, you're, you're not opening yourself up to learn because you're defending what you think you know to be true. Now, at the moment, we're going through COVID-19. A lot of stuff is happening. You know, we've got sides to, you know, we've got lots of different sides. Some people are sitting in the middle, but then we've got some people saying, oh, you know, they're, they're really, it's a pandemic. They're wearing their masks. They're washing their face. They're not washing their face. They're washing their hands a million times. They're keeping their distance from everyone. They've been told to do that. Uh, they're, you know, really focused on um, the numbers of deaths and, you know, they and they, they're, putting the message out in regards to that and then there's the opposite of that people saying you don't need a mask it's not even a pandemic um, there's lots of people saying that the numbers are fudge that it's not as bad as the you know it's 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 the flu and COVID-19 are very similar now what you know that that's there's so much information out there that is different and even right now I know that uh, the Black Lives Matter, you know, that, that's come out with a vengeance. And, you know, we've got this one side saying, you know, it's all about, you know, making sure it's all about racism and anti-racism. And then we've got the other side saying, it's oh, this message is more than racism. There's a hidden agenda. You know, so, so we as humans need to seek the truth, research the truth. Because where is the truth among all of these different opinions? I feel that we need to challenge everything we know or that we think we know. We've got to continue challenging everything that we know uh, and to be open to learn. So to be open to learn, we need to have that childlike curiosity. We need to even... Try on, so try on the opposite point of view. Now, what if the opposite was true? And so so by trying stuff on, we're not saying defending what we think is right at that moment. We are, we're like a blank canvas. We're trying it on. We're seeing if that was possible. 
And I know, I love the, the quote from Stephen Covey, seek first to understand and then you too could be can be understood, something like that. And it's true. Often someone will have their belief system that they tell us and we shut them out straight away, particularly if it's a strong belief of ours. Now the world is designed for us to conform. We often follow like sheep. If you think about what's just happening at the moment in social media, I, I mean, I watch my own behaviour. When Black Lives Matter, when that happened and there was, I remember it was late at night or fairly late at night, I switched on my phone, I was on Instagram and suddenly everyone's putting this you know, black screen about Black Lives Matter. And the first thing I thought of, and I looked at it and I got a quick uh, assumption, I suppose, of what it was about. And then I, and I'm, of course, I'm thinking, well, you know, I don't like racism, so I'm going to make sure that I support. So I put the Black Lives thing up, up as well without really understanding in depth what it was all about. And it was so interesting to see how quickly it spread from the US to Australia. And that message was out there. And everyone was doing the black, blackout screens and suddenly we've got the protests, you know, it, it just escalated. Uh, so it's really interesting how human behaviour plays out. And the thing is that we need to be open with our thinking all of the time because we are so programmed to conform. We're so programmed to be part of a tribe and to fit in. And there's so many instances that I've seen when people don't go with the tribe or they don't have that same way of thinking or they challenge that thinking, then they're condemned. It's like, well, hold on a minute, and they're put back in their place. I, I watch, sometimes I watch the project. I don't watch the news because, or else I'll get a little snippet of, of the news that I want to get and then I turn it off because I, I don't want that in my, all of this negativity in my brain. But sometimes I watch the project project in Australia. So it's a it's sort of a news done differently show. And there's a guy on there, Steve Price. Now, Steve Price is for me, he comes left field sometimes. So he'll, you know, he has these ideas or thoughts or he doesn't go with a flow and you know, someone will think that the majority will think one thing about a subject and he might go the opposite, right? So and I don't always agree with what he says. But what I really notice is that when he does that, when he disagrees with what the norm, and I'm putting hyphen um, exclamation marks up there, the norm, then he's so criticised by the rest of the panel. So all the other people on the panel will just jump at him. It's like, hold on a minute. And so... Rather than understanding and seeking to understand, if he's got a different opinion from the norm, he's not fitting in and so he gets slammed for it. And I, and I find that really, it, it upsets me because I think, hold on, even if I completely don't agree, agree with this person in some respects, I still there's still something maybe to learn because what about if, there is you know, information that he's got that I don't know about. And rather than opening your mind, you're just closing and shutting off those learnings. And often we do that when somebody is not going with the norm, where they're conforming, we're like sheep. Uh, and so it's really interesting to watch and to know that we can get into that pattern of just going with what everyone else says rather than saying, hold on a minute, let's just question it. Let's just question all of this. Um, I, I, I love the saying that best, the best lies are the ones that are mixed with the truth. And they're the most dangerous lies because if there's some truth in the information given and then you attach it, it's like, okay, well, this, this could be true. And they're the dangerous lies. So for me, it's about really opening myself up to learn about the world, about everything around me, my beliefs, questioning everything and seeking to understand so then I can be understood. 
and to be prepared to go against the flock. If the flock's saying one thing, it doesn't matter. You can still look at other areas and say, hold on a minute, is that true? And seeing your life with open eyes and be able to create your own truth that serves you. Question your current truth. So if you think, you know, think about the things in your life. So you might be saying to yourself, I can't draw. I can't draw because you learnt when you were little that you couldn't draw. So therefore I can't draw. Question it. But what if I could draw? Who says I can't draw? What courses have I taken to draw? You could be Picasso. (laughs) But because you've had these beliefs that have held you back and you haven't questioned them, it's stopping you from possibly being the most incredible artist that you could be. But because of an experience that you learned at a young age, you're still holding on to that belief. So that's stopping you from learning. It might be things like in your mind by saying, I can't run a business. Who said you can't run a business? Or you might say, yeah, but um, JJ, I've had a business and then it flopped. Who cares? There's plenty of successful business owners that have had many businesses that have flopped. Or you might say, yeah, but and because we've all got these this evidence that it's 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 not true. So you, you might have evidence to say, yeah, but no one in my family has ever run a business. Who cares who's run a business in your family? There's lots of successful business owners that have no one in their family that have run a successful business. So really challenging those beliefs. Some of you might say, and think about your really strong beliefs that it's like a hook. When someone says the opposite, you're like, you just want to say you are wrong. Now, this is really challenging for us to do. But if we can then say, what about if that wasn't true that I believed? You know, what about, so some of you might say to yourself, God, God isn't real. Well, what about if he was? How do you know he's not? Do some research, like really go the opposite way of maybe what your strong beliefs are right now and seek to get evidence of the opposite. Just try it on. And it doesn't mean that you have to say, I've changed my mind or I agree or disagree. Because when we're learning, we're in a space of a blank canvas. We're trying stuff on. We're researching. We're saying, what if? And so that's so important when we're learning. We can't come from a space of knowing everything and being able to learn at the same time. Because we never know everything. So let's take one of our strong beliefs and let's flip it on its head and and continue to do that. If you think about it, when you were younger, have you changed your mind about beliefs? Of course you have because you've grown, you've developed, you've got evidence from other areas that tell you otherwise. So continue to do that as a strategy to be able to expand your thinking, expand your learning. And even if you don't change your beliefs, you've still learned something about the other side of how other people think. And being a a forever learner for me is about habits. It's about having habits that continue that growth, continue to open your mind. So for me, I love to read. Some of you may not like a physical book maybe you love to hear so you might have audio books podcasts you might watch youtube clips you might go to courses like really immerse yourself in the areas that are really important to you and i love what tony robbins says tony robbins says that repetition is the mother of skill so the more we do something the more we have a chance of mastering it now, so those of you that think I'm not a great, uh, I'm not a great drawer, or I'm not a great singer, or I haven't, you know, I've never run a business, I can't be a great business owner, or I'm not a great public speaker. Remember, rep- repetition is the mother of skill. So it takes it takes over and over and over immersing yourself in the practice to be able to master anything. And so the more that you repeat and put yourself into a task then you have got more chance of mastering it. And the other way I think is really important is to have models, have someone that's already done what you want to do and model what they do because they've got a, it's 
a recipe of success. And if you can see what their recipe, it's like a cake. If you, you know, if you've got the recipe, if you don't put the flour in and you change the recipe before being able to be a master cake maker and you just think, I'll just throw everything in and then you don't decide that you're not going to put the flour in, then the cake's not going to turn out necessarily. But if you follow someone that is the best cake baker that you know and they tell you all the tips and techniques and you follow their strategy, their recipe, then you will be able to create a, the same or similar product of that cake because you've followed the recipe. And then as you get master it and you can really do that cake, then you can be more inventive. But modeling others is a speed, it's a ticket that's going to get you to mastery a lot quicker by modeling others. And the other thing is research, researching what you want to learn. So whatever topic, any beliefs that you need to change, research. Get on that computer and research as much as you can. Read books and know that with learning, you never, ever land. And what do I mean by that? It's like if you're doing public speaking, it's like, okay, I'm a great public speaker now. I don't need to learn anymore. That's bullshit. There's always another level to learn. When you stop and you say, okay, I've landed, you're actually not staying in the same place. You're going backwards because you have there's all this new stuff out there that you could learn, say from a speaking point of view, that you're missing and you're moving backwards because everyone else is moving forward. So you've always got to be saying, I am always learning. And I want to finish this off with a quote and I don't know where this quote came from, but I love it anyway. It says, we live in a society where the free thinking, open minded people are called crazy and the ignorant, closed minded people are normal. <laughs> How's that quote? It's crazy. So what I'm saying to you guys is be the crazy one. Open your mind, question everything and continue to be an insatiable forever learner. Till next time. Thanks for tuning in to Be Your Own Best Coach with JJ. Make sure you subscribe to this podcast and follow me on Instagram at JJ Speaker Coach. And remember to live with insatiable passion, create an empowered life and inspire others to live theirs.